Yes, so we are discussing question number 8 from the textbook and uh, this question would be on page 4.62 of the new edition of costing module. I would say it's a very very important question. All the May 19 guys are expected to go through the question. One reason is because of the fact that in the old uh, edition of the module, this was a purely theory concept. It's a question on environmental management accounting. It was purely a theory part. Now they have incorporated a sum on a theory concept. So it's important for that as well. Second, apart from application of uh, theory in practical questions, this question is also a very interesting question on a standalone basis. So leave alone the fact that this is a practical question on a theory application. Apart from that, it's a very important question to understand costing in general. So I would strongly recommend all the May 19 guys to go through this question come what may before the exams. So um, uh, starting with the question, um, there's a company which makes grade A and grade B. Okay? 1 kg of grade A sells for 280 and 1 kg of grade B being my finished products sells for 400 per kg. That's my pure pure selling price. The products pass through three cost centers, uh, cost center 1, cost center 2, cost center 3 during the manufacturing process. So it goes from 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Total DM cost per kg of the fertilizer produced. So it's a fertilizer as a finished goods. So in case of finished goods, 1 kg cost of the finished product is 300 as far as DM is concerned. So understand one thing that 300 is the total cost of the finished goods. Some part of DM would be in cost center 1. Some part of DM would be in cost center 2 and some part of DM would be in cost center 3. Summation of everything is 300. Understand this. Then same thing for direct labor. Uh, we have uh, the cost of labor per kg of kilogram, I mean per kg of fertilizer produced is rupees 200. Again the same thing. Some cost will be incurred in cost center 1, some cost in cost center 2 and some cost in cost center 3. Moving on. Allocation of the cost centers is given below. Very important table to understand. Now direct material cost that is cost center 1, cost center 2, cost center 3 as I mentioned summation was 300, the split is 90 in cost center 1, 120 in cost center 2 and 90 again in cost center 3 making it 300 and 200 ka split is 60, 80, 60 labor cost. Then they have given cost allocation to grade A and grade B. Now understand that CC1, CC2 and CC3 are not products, they are cost centers 1. Second my products are grade A and grade B. So don't get confused, 3 columns and 2 rows etc, grade A and grade B are my finished products. 30% and 70% for um, uh, grade A and grade B, 50% uh, 50% for grade A, grade B and 30 and 70 for grade A, grade B. That's my allocation of costs for grade A and grade B. Now, okay before we start, uh, before you go ahead, how do you interpret that? This means the direct any cost element goes 30 per so the cost center costs of cost center 1 or the uh, 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 direct material cost of cost center 1 will be allocated 30 percent to A and 70 percent to B. That's the way I should read that table. Moving on, all expenses considered to be overheads per kg is 150. So 150 are my other overheads. This obviously is over and above the DM and DL. Then moving on, the management account of the company has recently come across the concept of, okay I didn't, I think I missed out a sentence, this is allocated equally between grade A and grade B. So the overheads were initially allocated equally between A and B. Pricing decisions for the fertilizers is made on the above cost allocation. So I am pricing my product depending on the above allocation, that is a normal thing for us. Moving on. The management account of the company has recently come across the concept of environmental management accounting. Okay. Pricing of the product should also factor the environmental cost generated by each product and this is exactly the concept of EMA which was there in theory of the old edition of the module not supported by a sum which is now in the new edition. An analysis of the expenses revealed that the total cost of 150, they are talking of the overheads includes includes incinerator cost of 90 per kg of fertilizer, of fertilizer produce. Now incinerator means nothing but a small container where all the waste is generated or collected. Okay. This incinerator is used to dispose as I mentioned the solid waste during the manufacturing process. So basically out of the overheads some element is because of the waste generation and some other element is for some basic normal overheads. 
Below is the cost center and the product wise information of the solid waste produced. This is the waste produced by different different finished goods being grade A and grade B. What does this indicate? It means that whatever is the waste ka costs or the incinerator costs of 90 per kg, these costs have to be allocated amongst the products depending on the waste generated by the products, which was not happening before. Before all the costs were being allocated depending on equal basis that is 50-50. But now since we have the data of the waste generated, the incinerator costs which is directly associated with waste, at least those costs should go in the order of the waste generated. So you generate more waste and take more costs. Moving on, based on the impact that each product has on the environment, the management would like to revise the cost allocation, obviously, okay? based take, uh, taking into account the incinerator cost that each product generates. So now the company is moving towards EMA. So whatever are the waste generation costs, they have to go depending on which product generates how much waste. Very logical. The remaining overhead expense of 60. Now what are these 60? You remember that the total overheads were 150 out of which 90 are those incinerator costs. Now these 60 are the balancing figure of 150. Brother, that 60 is to be allocated equally. So the question has itself said that 90 has to go as per the, in the waste generated and the balance 60 will go equally. Fair and square. Okay. Now what do we have to do? One, compute the product wise profits based on the original cost allocation. So in the original cost allocation, there is no uh, bifurcation of the overheads. It is simply going equally. Very simple. Recompute the, um, uh, the profits based on activity based costing or environmental management accounting. Now EMA and activity based costing are a little connected because actually we are allocating overheads depending on the activity or the activity is the waste generation. So the environmental or the uh, incinerator costs which are linked with the wastages have to go in that ratio of the factor that generates waste. That is my waste kgs or the waste output. Then analyze the difference in the, pro uh, uh, the profitability and recommend the key takeaways. So my part 2 and part 3 are purely uh, theory and analytical. The first two parts are compute the, uh, the profits as per old system and new system. Very interesting. Now let's first focus on the existing method. Bravar, let us start with the solution now. Uh, question 8 is of the textbook and page 4.62 of the new module we have discussed this. Now when we start with the product profit, our aim should be to start from selling price and subtract all the costs as usual. So let us make a table where we have the selling price first and all the direct costs later and then let's allocate the um, overheads equally because it is the first method. However, it is not that simple. BM and DL are coming through working note which are very interesting. Starting with selling price. Selling price of 280 and 400 is given directly in the question. A and B are my finished products. So selling price 280, 400, both given was in the question. Now coming to direct material. Normally, the direct material costs are directly given to us. Here we have been given, here we have been given uh, the direct material uh, cost center wise. And we have also been given the split or the share of expenses going to A and going to B. Now, let's read the first cost center 1 direct material cost. Now, direct material cost in cost center 1 appears to be 90 if you can see. That 90 is cost center 1 cost on direct material. Now, grade A and grade B are both entering cost center 1. So, some portion of 90 has to go to grade A and some portion of 90 has to go to grade B. This allocation for cost center 1 percentage, look at cost center 1 column, it is 30% 70% which means, which means 90 which is the first cost center's material cost that should go 30% to A and 90 the same into 70% should go to B because the cost allocation for cost center 1, as far as it, uh, uh, the costs are concerned, are 30%, 70%. So, DM cost of cost center 1 into 30%, DM cost of cost center 1 into 70% is my cost allocation of materials. Moving on, then we've got cost center 2. Cost center 2, the direct material cost, cost center 2, the direct material cost is 120. And cost center 2, the cost allocation is 50, 50%. 
so 120 into 50 percent 120 into 50 percent clear then moving on cost center 3 the direct material cost for cost center 3 is 90 90 and the split for cost center 3 is 30 70 so 90 into 30 percent 90 into 70 percent doing all these things we can total a and b's cost note that these are not my products they are my cost centers and a and b are my products so i will add in columns so this plus this plus this is the material cost allocation out of rupees 300 towards material uh, uh, towards a uh, grade a of the finished product so this 114 will come here as 114 then 186 is my grade b's total direct material cost that was so 186 will come here and if you see 114 and 186 together account for rupees 300 which was direct material cost we have simply allocated 300 among grade a and grade b clear this is my entire working for direct material if you have understood this then your uh, direct labor would be very simple because it is exactly the same um, um, method let's discuss that as well coming to cost center one cost of direct labor that appears to be 60 60 then the allocation of cost center one is 30 70 so into 30 percent into 70 percent similarly cost center two price of material appears uh, uh, sorry of labor appears to be 80 the percentage split is 50 50 50 percent 50 percent moving on cost center 3 direct labor cost so cost center 3 direct labor cost appears to be 60 60 and the split of the expense is again 30 70 so 30 percent 70 percent when you add up a when you add up b it totals to 76 and 124 and that is exactly 200 and that is my labor cost for the entire company going for grade a and for grade b this is how you get your direct material cost and this is how you get your direct labor cost fairly interesting now coming to overheads since this is an existing system or the traditional system the question has clearly mentioned that in the existing system the overheads whatever their nature these are going equally to a and b so 75 goes to a 75 goes to b when you add up everything sp is known all the costs are known overheads we have just allocated we get the profit on a per unit basis and we have also computed the profitability so that this can be compared when uh, we allocate costs as per environmental management accounting now before we go to ema let's analyze this what is happening in this case see 150 was the overheads and we know for a fact that out of 150 we are spending some costs on that incinerator thing and incinerator is linked with the wastage so what's happening is that irrespective irrespective of which product is generating how much waste that is not being considered and the costs are going equally so if i am the manager of product b for example and if i know for a fact that my product is generating lesser waste what is happening is that this product's cost which is generating more waste is eventually coming in my like pnl even though i am taking care and i am taking measures to eliminate the waste or i am taking care to not en uh, uh, pollute the environment just because this product is polluting the environment i am taking the uh, uh, hit for that as well through equal cost allocation so if i am not generating waste even then even then a part of waste is coming to my pnl because of the allocation method being equal this will be taken care of in the environmental management accounting where i am allocating the cost basis activity based costing or basis the waste generated clear on this hope this is clear now moving on moving on to activity based costing or environmental management very important now since we know for a fact since we know for a fact that out of 150 i think 90 90 per kg is uh, uh, the overheads which is linked with the incinerator so first first my job is to allocate the incinerator costs among the cost centers see my ultimate objective is to allocate the incinerator cost to respective products but that is a second layered step before allocating the cost to the products let me first allocate the costs among the cost drivers uh, uh, sorry my cost centers 
so i need to allocate the cost among the cost centers first once i know my cost center costs that is cost center 1 cost center 2 and cost center 3 only then will i move or allocate the costs among a and b so first let me allocate the costs among the cost centers if you have understood this the next logical question is what should be the basis of allocating the incinerator costs among the cost centers incinerator cost is waste gen is waste based so depending on the number of kgs of waste or, or number of tons as the case is number of kgs of the waste generated by cost centers let me allocate the cost on that basis so we have a working note to first find out what is the waste generated by each cost center and that is given to me in the question in second table the waste generated in tons okay they have given uh, tons and not kgs so cost center one we have two uh, two tons for grade a and two tons for grade b making it four tons cost center two three and two making it five tons cost center three one and five making it six tons so this is the waste generated by each cost center now my job is to allocate now my job is to allocate the incinerator costs and the other overheads on the basis or uh, 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 sorry you have to allocate the cost among the cost centers first then we decide about the basis so i need to allocate at least the incinerator cost which are depending on the waste generated in the waste generated ratio having understood this let's first find out what is the incinerator overheads the question has clearly mentioned that out of 150 90 per kg is the incinerator based overheads so 90 and not the entire 150 90 being incinerator based and incinerator is linked with the waste generated 90 will go in the ratio of 4 is to 5 is to 6 which means 90 will go in the ratio of 24 is to 30 is to 36 that is nothing but 90 in 4 is to 5 to 6 so 90 has already been allocated among the cost centers note that my objective is to allocate 90 among the products but that will happen later first let me allocate it to cost centers now out of 150 if 90 has been allocated the remaining 60 is still to be allocated the question has clearly said that other overheads are going to be allocated equally so 60 will go equally to cost center 1 cost center 2 and cost center 3 and this will give me cost center wise overheads of 44 50 and 56 and this needs to be allocated to respective products that is grade a and grade b so first we have to allocate cost among the cost centers and from cost centers we have to allocate the cost among the products being grade a and grade b hope this is clear now now we are going towards allocation of costs now we know for a fact now we know for a fact that my uh, uh, that my incinerator costs are 24 30 and 36 now in these now how do we allocate these costs among the respective products because that is my end objective so these cost center one costs have to go to respective products this 24 is coming from 90 90 is incinerator costs this depends on the waste which means 24 also depends on the waste if my job is to allocate 24 among a and b and 24 is pertaining to cost center 1 my job is to allocate 24 on the basis of the waste generated in cost center 1 for a and b that is 2 is to 2 so 24 24 will go in the ratio of 2 is to 2 for a and b that is because 24 is coming from 90 90 is the incinerator cost incinerator depends or incinerator is driven by waste so this has to go on the basis of waste since i'm allocating it to products it should go to product wastes in cost center one moving on cost center two the incinerator cost is 30 depending on waste this will go in the ratio of 3 is to 2 so 30 will go in the ratio of 3 is to 2 moving on exactly same 36 is cost center 3's incinerator costs 36 will go on the basis of 1 is to 5 because 36 ka allocation is coming from uh, 4 is to 5 is to 6 
and this is 1 and 5 making it 6 so this will go in the ratio of 1 is to 5 moving on once we allocate the total uh, cost total cost of 90 we have to simply check that 36 and 54 has to be equal to 90 because I have allocated 90 in A and B clear so I have allocated the the uh, the incinerator costs amongst A and B now last thing is, uh, is left about the allocation of other overheads the other overheads have been clearly uh, uh, mentioned to be equal so 20 20 and 20 will go on equal basis to A and B because the question was very clear to allocate it equally so all 20s of cost center 1 cost center 2 and cost center 3 will ultimately go to A and B equally that is 10 and 10 clear so once this is done there is 30 and 30 so 36 of incinerator costs and 30 of other overheads makes it 66 54 of incinerator costs and 30 of other costs make it 84 and 66 and 84 is now going to replace 30 uh, 66 and 84 is now going to replace the 75 and 75 so this will be this will be 66 and this will be this will be 84 so 75 and 75 were 150 66 and 84 if you sum up it will again come to 150 signifying my overheads have gone to a and my overheads have gone to b on some basis so this is how this is how we come to the costs um, um, we come to allocating the overheads on the basis of the waste generated and this is in sync with the concept of environmental management accounting where a product takes a hit a product takes a hit for the waste generated by it and the other product also takes the hit for the waste generated by it so eventually you generate more waste and you take more costs you generate lesser waste and you take lesser hits for the cost so in the next video in, in the next video, we'll be um, uh, making a statement as per the existing, uh, uh, as per the environmental management system, and then we'll be analyzing as to what is the impact of this cost allocation on the profits and the profitability, and how um, how we need to. I think part two and part three are on theory, and how we need to analyze it correctly, and also we'll recommend some takeaways of the environmental management accounting system of cost allocation. Fairly important question. Thank you.